What's up guys, welcome back to another TK Tech video and today's gonna to be a really quick video just to talk about the massive update for Samsung Notes. Now I already did an in-depth review of Samsung Notes as well as a few other note-taking applications such as OneNote in the best free note-taking apps. The link will be in the description below or you can click on the card in the top right corner. In that video I talked about all the features of Samsung Notes there were a lot of good features, but there were also a lot of bad features or rather disappointing features that essentially prevented me from using Samsung Notes as my primary note-taking application. Now, I'm not gonna say that Samsung watched my video, but they fixed nearly everything or every complaint that I had from that video. So today I'm gonna to talk about what Samsung changed and how they improved this application massively, as well as what they didn't change and what they decided to keep the same. Okay, so if we go into Samsung Notes, as you see, you still have the pretty much the same layout, the same design, essentially nothing drastic has changed in terms of the design of the application. Um, if we click on New Note, the first difference you can see here is that now we have it in pages. So before, it was just almost one continuous page. Now you have it in separate pages, so you essentially have page numbers. What that means is, is that you can, you can click this button here and see all your pages. This can help you organize your notes much better. So now you can have information on one page, information on page 10, page 15, and you can quickly access them on the side here. Now, if you watch my previous video, when I talk about Samsung Notes, I talk about how you can also type as well as write notes on this application. However, the problem before was everything you typed was separate from what you wrote. So you couldn't actually write except where you've typed. However, in this case, I can type a whole paragraph and if you go onto pen, you can essentially type anywhere. Now this gives you much more freedom customization because some people don't just want to type or just want to write. Some people have certain things that they want to type and maybe just want to annotate with a pen instead. However, not only can you do that, but in this update, you can also add text boxes. Now this is similar to what we saw on OneNote, where you could pretty much essentially write anywhere you want on your OneNote page. The same thing can happen on Samsung Notes. So if I click on text box, I can have a text box and I can drag it and I can move it around wherever I want to and I can type essentially wherever I want to. So this again goes with the idea of, for example, if you've written your notes and you want to put a certain piece of text, maybe some numbers, maybe it's in a different language, for example, a translation, and you want to type it up, you can do that and you can move it around and you can drag it. It just gives that freedom for the note taker for whoever wants to use this feature. The next great thing is that finally, Samsung have introduced templates. So before, you were set with the default standard lines that Samsung put. They were faint, um, you couldn't adjust them to personally, they were too wide apart. Now you can have plain as the default, but if you go into templates, there's a much wider selection of types of papers you can use. So you can have standard lines, you can have the more traditional line paper that has that red margin, or you can have grids, for example. Now the variety is nowhere near as much as an application such as Squid. Now again, if you haven't checked out my best free note-taking apps video, I touched upon an application called Squid and it had the most templates on any note-taking application that I had ever seen. Now, this is still a massive improvement. This is much better than only having one default you know, template. So thank you, Samsung. Now the next one's a really big one because like I said, in the, in the previous Samsung Notes, the text, the drawings, and the attachments were kind of separate. You couldn't really you know, manipulate them where you wanted to put them. For example, in the previous one, when you added an image, you couldn't really choose where you put the image. You could make it smaller and larger, I think, but you couldn't really move it around on the page. This could be really annoying because sometimes you just want to grab an image, put it down, and write around it. However, in this new update, they did fix that. So if I click on the attach button here, and I can go on to image, now I have this image I can press and hold, and now I can move it around. I can make it smaller, I can drag it, I can just put it where I want to put it. Now the probably, for me personally, the biggest change that Samsung have done is allow the attachment of PDFs. There's no denying, for a Samsung tablet, this is the Tab S6, but for the Tab S7 that's come out, the Tab S7 Plus even, the Samsung Note is probably the best optimized note-taking app for the S Pen. The reason why maybe not many people use it or used to not use it was because of the fact that you couldn't add PDFs attachments. Well, one of the reasons, for me at least, was that you couldn't attach PDFs. This is huge. This is the way I take notes. I need to be able to attach PDFs. So then you can go into PDF, click on it, and you know, it brings it up here. Now with, it, with this PDF, just like you would on any note taking application, you can draw on it. You can annotate, you can put arrows, you know, 
speech marks, question marks, you, you can do whatever you want. And this is something that a lot of people are going to really like and that a lot of people were looking for. So again, thank you, Samsung. Now, probably the second biggest improvement that Samsung have done is with its organization. You may or may not know, but in the old Samsung notes, the only organization you could do was categorize your notes and then you would see your categories on the side. However, in this version of Samsung Notes, you can create an unlimited amount of folders, which is incredible. Because even the other note-taking applications that I've seen that allow you to create folders often are not free. So this is a really good implementation for Samsung and something that I will definitely use. So if we go into folders, I can manage folders. At the moment, I don't really have anything because I haven't really added anything to any folders, but I can add a folder, name it, uh, folder two, let's call it for example. I can go into that and I can add a subfolder and then I can go into that and add another subfolder. You can keep going, you know, for so far with my testing, there hasn't been a limit to how many folders or subfolders you can do. And what you would do then is you would go onto a note, for example, you go onto one of your notes. So this one that I quickly did, and then you would move it to a particular folder. So you'd have all your folders here. So I would move it to folder two for, if I wanted to. and. There you go, you now we see it in folder two. This is again is one of the biggest reasons why I wasn't using Samsung Notes as my primary note-taking application because I needed a place to organize my notes more than just into categories. I needed folders, I needed subfolders. OneNote was a good application that allowed me to do that. But now that Samsung Notes has implemented this, it could be worth considering using this application instead. Now there are some other changes that Samsung have done. A lot of them maybe I wouldn't really use. One of them that I just wanted to quickly mention was this new audio recording feature. What this does allow you to do, for example, is start recording and then you can write. So for example, if I wrote, hello, welcome to TKI Tech and I paused it and if I played it back, it will go through the recording and bring up the text as you wrote it during that recording. So for example, if you were in a lecture hall and you were recording your lecturer and writing text at the same time, it will bring up your text as the lecturer is speaking. Personally, I would never see myself using this feature. I just wanted to mention it because it is more of a significant update and maybe one of you would find it useful. Now, Samsung Notes has made some more minor but still appreciated updates. So for example, now there is a much wider range of thicknesses that you could use for the pen. I think on the previous Samsung Notes, there were only five different thicknesses. Now, now you can go from zero to 100 and this just gives you know people or note takers a much larger range of thicknesses that they can use. Now, the next one is also a minor improvement because you could technically do this before, and that was changing the background color. Now, before you could change the background color, but it didn't look very good because it only changed the background of where you were writing, whereas now it kind of changes the background of the whole application. It just makes it look much cleaner, much nicer. It's more of a design and aesthetic kind of thing, but personally, I much prefer it this way. However, there's one thing that I feel Samsung have you know done worse is their color options. Personally, for me, I preferred how it was before. In the previous Samsung Notes, there was a essentially infinite range of color options. It was just a, a large gradient. Now Samsung have almost limited the number of colors you can do. Now, obviously it's still a, a gradient, but it's more stepwise, it's not as gradual. So there's ultimately there's a more limited number of colors that you can do. Some people may prefer this already having preset options. Personally, I don't, I prefer the way it was previously. This is just my opinion though. But if you watched the previous video where I talk about Samsung Notes, you'd all know that there is a feature that Samsung allows you to essentially draw perfect shapes. So if you click on this button at the top here, you can draw any shape and this note taking app will fix it for you. So if you draw a circle, it's a circle. If you draw a square, it makes it into a perfect square. One of the problems that I had with this is that you couldn't erase and you still can't erase parts of this image. So if I draw a circle, and for any reason, you know, I want to just erase part of this circle. I want to erase just maybe half of it or a quarter of it, or, or just, you know, part of any shape that I've drawn. I don't know why Samsung just don't give us that feature, but it's something that I've wanted and isn't on this update either. Now you may or may not know, but Samsung have done quite a few partnerships with Microsoft this year, and they've actually implemented Microsoft features into this note-taking app. Now, for example, now if I want to share, I can share not only as a PDF, which I think is new, we can also share it as a Microsoft Word file, uh, even a Microsoft PowerPoint file. So it would come up as a Microsoft PowerPoint slide. So as you can see, it puts it into PowerPoint. And this is the good thing with not having the pages in Samsung Notes is that each page will correspond to a slide on 
PowerPoint, and I'm guessing that if you convert it to a Word document, each page will be a page on your Word document. This is a feature that I wasn't expecting, something that maybe I didn't really need, but now that I have it, I can see myself using. However, there is still the problem that Samsung Notes cannot be accessed online. Unlike OneNote, which I talked about previously, where you can go onto any device, as long as you can connect to the internet, you can access your OneNote account and access all of your notes and edit them and write and type on that device. You don't have to download the application or any files or anything like that. It's all done from the cloud. Samsung don't have that. So yes, great, you know, I can synchronize my notes from my tablet to my phone, but both of these devices need to have the application installed. I can't go on someone else's phone, let's say an iPhone, and access my Samsung notes that way. Whereas I can access my OneNote notes. This is something that Samsung should really install because I know that they're planning on it, think on you know being able to save your notes to OneDrive. But I don't think you can go on a public computer, for example, and then edit it from there. All in all though, I think Samsung have made a tremendous improvement in this application. Pretty much everything, apart from a few nitpicking features, have been improved. This is now an application that I think I can recommend people to actually use for their note taking with the fact that now you can attach PDFs and organize into folders is huge. It's a massive, massive thing. And I'm very glad that Samsung have brought it. Anyway, I don't wanna keep this video going too long. If you've liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you really like it, hit that subscribe button and I really appreciate it. That's it from me and I'll see you on the next TK Tech video.